Welcome to worship at Redeemer United Church on this Palm Sunday morning. I'm so glad that you're all here. The liveliness, the kids, oh, we're so excited. That's what that first Palm Sunday felt like when Jesus came riding into Jerusalem on a donkey, palms waving, uh, chattering, and I hope our worship this morning feels like that for you as we launch into this holy week where Jesus is making his way, the hour has come in making his way to the cross, not for his sake, but for ours. So what a beautiful week we are entering into this holy week, and it begins with this Holy Palm Sunday. So welcome to worship, all of you. Welcome to those of you who are uh, maybe worshiping with us for the first time. If you are, we are so very glad that you have joined us today. I'm Pastor Jennifer, uh, Jennifer Gold, the uh, pastor here at Redeemer, and we just want to say we are thrilled to have you with us in worship today. And we want to say welcome to those who are worshiping with us online as well. We're really glad to have you be able to join us too. A few announcements before we get started with the Palm Sunday procession. 
We want to say thank you to Verna Dietrich, our organist and pianist. We're thankful that Verna and John are both feeling better and here. We want to say thank you to Jeannie Rowley, our liturgist, leading us today. Our altar flowers today are in um, loving memory of Alton and Irma Rowley. They're given by Reagan and Jeannie Rowley, so thank you very much. Our bulletins today are in celebration of Leola Schultz's 98th birthday, given by her daughter, Betty. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Y'all, we need to pray for Leola. She's not doing well and um, had been in the hospital and it's just not um, been a good experience coming out of the hospital her daughter is with her today she said i won't be able to be there because i'm sitting with mom so if, let's, we will be praying for her in our prayers today and invite you to pray for her it's her birthday week and we just want to hold her up in prayer so that she gets better and um, recovering Happy birthday to everyone who's celebrating birthdays this week, and happy wedding anniversary to those who are celebrating that special occasion and milestone in your anniversary life. Today, um, of course, it is Palm Sunday. We have the Easter egg hunt following worship, so we invite you. Our BCE is going to coordinate that and get the kids all organized and ready for the Easter egg hunt, um, so we invite you to stay for that. We have then, as I said, it's Holy Week, so Maundy Thursday. We do not have Wednesday night services on Holy Week. We have Maundy Thursday, which is we are going to do the foot washing and Holy Communion at our Maundy Thursday service when Jesus gave a new mandate to go and do likewise, and to love one another as I have loved you. That's what Monday Thursday is all about. So I invite you to come Thursday evening for worship. The kids don't have school on Friday. So come and kids come along too because they might be more apt to get their feet washed than some of you adults who may not want to. So I invite the kids to come to worship and uh, too and, and it'll be an experiential experience. The scripture's coming alive. Then on Friday, we have our Good Friday worship. Again, it's 7 o'clock. Both of these services are at 7 here in the sanctuary where we walk with Jesus in silent reverence to what he did for us on that Good Friday. And then, of course, um, on Easter Sunday, a week from today, we will gather two different opportunities to worship. One is at 7.30 a.m., what we call our sunrise service, is outside in the grove um, in worship. And last year we had quite a crowd for that. Um, if it rains or the weather is inclement, we will move it inside. So it will always happen, but hopefully outside in the grove. But even if there's rain or something, we will still have the 7.30 service. We would just move it indoors. And then we have the Easter breakfast immediately following that worship service starting between 8.30 and 10.15. And then, of course, at 10.30, we have the traditional worship like we have now. Both of those services will include the flowering of the cross, which is a tradition here at Redeemer and in this area. So we invite everybody to bring fresh cut flowers to be able to adorn the cross. The kids do it at the late service. Adults and children do it at the early service. We'll have flowering of the cross at both services. So bring some fresh cut flowers and turn that old wooden cross into a beautiful full of life flowered cross on Easter Sunday. We do have eight more Easter lilies that are available for uh, to donate in honor of memory of someone. So if you would like to order an Easter lily, there are order forms in the back on the table and you can give to Marcia or give to the church office today <laughs> before next Sunday. Let me see if there's any other announcements. Anything I've missed for the good of the group? <sighs> okay, <laughs> so let us rise, and for our worship, we're going to start facing the back of the church as we do our palm procession, so I invite you to turn and face the back of the church.
just like that first Palm Sunday, the I love the noise. This is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Open wide the gates of your hearts. Let us wave the palm branches high. Jesus is coming. He comes in humility to claim God's own. Let the Savior enter. Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Our palm processional hymn is Hosanna, loud Hosanna, hymn number 297. Please join in singing. As we conclude our Palm Sunday procession, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Patient God, we confess that we love a parade. We are very happy to see banners waving and hear people shouting their praises but we fail to see the sadness on the face of the Savior. Our shouts scream our fear. He comes to us as King, and we expect that royal treatment will follow. We do not believe that there is few days we will be among those who will turn our backs and run from his presence. How fickle we are, O oh Lord. Our to see the needs of others, to reach out in trust and faith, to be willing to witness to your good news of saving love, heal our hearts and give our courage on the days ahead. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our responsive call, Assurance of Pardon. Hear the good news. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. 
In the name of Jesus Christ, I am forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. the congregation to be seated. I invite our BCE to come forward to help with our youth message. And Derek Pollock is going to lead us in teaching the kids how to turn their palm branches into crosses. And um, Derek made one of these last year for me when he came out of worship after Palm Sunday. And um, I said, hey, would you teach the kids how to do that during the youth message today? And he said, sure. Well, his wife volunteered him. <laughs> so guys, have a seat. Listen, you gotta listen, okay? Any other kids wanna come up? Big kids, you can come too if you want. Make a palm branch cross. Okay, everybody gets one of these. BC, you can want to help hand this out. Here we go. Here you take one of these. I guess one, but don't don't bang it on anybody. Don't fold it yet. Got too many. Okay. Everybody get one. Anybody not get one yet? Didn't get one. Okay. Do you want one that doesn't have one? Okay, and then everybody gets a smaller one too. Here, let me just give this to you. <laughs> Oh, Mommy, we have a screamer down here. She wants you. It's okay, baby. Aw. Mom, you can stay down with her. Some of the moms. I was thinking about parents. So you can stay here with her and help make her one if you want. Okay, so everybody got a second one? A smaller one? And you need a string, okay? Everybody get a string. Miss Ashley's got them. Hand them to the, if you want to pass them to the BCE folks. She wants to make one too. Can I have one big one and one small one? We can pass back. Big one and a small one, Tammy. Jackson needs a small one. Here, pass this back, or Tanya. Do you all need some for her back there? Okay, y'all listen to Mr. Derek. Derek is the daddy of Jessalyn and Henley up here. Derek, you teach us how to do this. You want to stand up and show them? You might need to, so everybody can see. I really put him on the spot. I, lo I, I love it, Derek. They just joined the church last, a couple weeks ago. <laughs> but have been very active in the church. Okay, so take your bigger palm leaf and fold it in half. I'll repeat after you since we We have some extras if they, right, for the little ones if yes. they can't quite get it made. So don't worry if you don't quite get it, okay? Fold your, other smaller one in half. Fold your smaller one in half. So you should have two branches folded in half. Good job. Can you show them that? Lay it across the other one, like a cross. See? See what Mr. Pollock, we always say Mr. Pollock, Mr. Derek. <laughs> Excellent, Sophia. Does everybody see that? Hold it like a cross. Okay, what's next? 
so lay your string across it at an angle. Can you show everybody that? Y'all look up here. So you lay your string across at an angle. Do we have more string? Okay, and then what? You're going to wrap it around that angle a couple of times. Here, right here. Here's one. Do you guys have a string? I need a string for these girls. <gasps> Look what you already finished yours, Henley. Oh, here's some more strings. So you wrap it at an angle, and you wrap it around a few times, and then you wrap it the other way, right? Then wrap it the other way. Here you go. And then just tuck it in. Oh, where'd that string go? Now, y'all want to guess why we're making crosses out of palm leaves? Why would we make a cross out of palm leaves? Because it's Palm Sunday. But why a cross? Because Jesus died on the cross, right? This is a little harder than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Derek, I may have to have you make me another one this year. <laughs> I still have it hanging up in my office. If you say these, they will dry, and it will save to last year. I still have mine in my office that Derek made me last year for Palm Sunday. So you can hold on to these and let them dry. Huh? Where do you start? Just in the center and wrap around both sides of your cross. So we're making a cross because Palm Sunday leads Jesus to where? It was an amazing parade and people were waving palm branches. But in just a few days, people, those same people that were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who came in the Lord will be shouting, crucify him, crucify him. And how did they crucify him? On a cross, right? So that's why we make these palm branches into a cross, to remind us that it wasn't all about the parade, as nice as it seems, because it wouldn't be long, just a few days, before those very same people would be shouting for him to be crucified. There you go. I'm not sure if I tucked it in well enough, but there you go. Okay? Does everybody have their cross made? No. Some do? Okay. Now, if there's any adults out there that want to make one, we got lots of palm branches. <laughs> so after service today, if you want to grab one, you can and make one yourself. These are great gifts to give to people who cannot worship with us here today. You can make them a palm cross and take it to them. So if you have someone that you're visiting today or this week that's in a nursing home or in a hospital, you could make them a palm cross. Or ask Derek if he'll make it for you. <laughs> Put him to work after church. <laughs> Derek, I'm sorry. I'm volunteering you all sorts of ways, aren't I? I can't figure out how to tuck it in. It looks better not tucked in? Okay. You know what? I'm going to tie it in a knot. It works that way, too. So, can we give one of the extra ones to Camden, Miss Ashley? Unless Tim. And Grant wanted one, too. There we go. There's your cross. Okay, so I want you to remember this. When you look at your cross, that it's not all about the parade. We, we give praise to God for what Jesus has done. And the parade was only the beginning. But it's what began his walk and his journey to the cross, to die on a cross for you and for me, so that your sins may be forgiven so that you know that you will never die. You get to live with Jesus in heaven forever. And so most importantly, you know how much God and Jesus love you.
Believe it or not, God and Jesus love you more than your parents love you. And that's a whole lot, right? So I want you to put your cross up somewhere where you can see it every day this week. And remember what Jesus has done for you because of how much he loves you. Okay? Let's pray. That's a beautiful cross. Jesus, we thank you. What a joyous day, that day that you rode into town on a donkey and the people were shouting Hosanna and waving the palm branches. But we also know what that day meant for you, that it was the beginning of another procession that you would walk to the cross for us to show how much you love us. Jesus, may these palm crosses remind us of how much you love us, that you died on a cross for us. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, you may go back to your seats. Thank you, Mick. Can we say thank you to Mr. Derek for helping teach us? Thank you. And thank you for the BCE to help. Our BCE is the ones hosting the Easter egg hunt today after church. So what a blessing. All right, and we continue with our reading of scripture. For today's scripture, we're just reading from the the Old Testament, from Zechariah, and then the gospel reading from the Gospel of John. You will hear some of the words in the Gospel of John that are spoken in the Old Testament in Zechariah, which was prophesied 500 years before Jesus had that first Palm Sunday. All right, let's listen. Our scripture reading this morning is Zechariah chapter 9, verses 9 through 12. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he. Humble and riding on a donkey. On a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot of Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope, today I declare that I will restore to you double. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel this Palm Sunday comes from the gospel of John, the 12th chapter, beginning with the 12th verse. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. So the crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to testify. It was also because they heard that he had performed this sign that the crowd went out to meet him. The Pharisees then said to one another, You see, you can do nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. 
So I don't typically like to use the little internet stories or whatever, but I heard, I saw this one and I just thought it was too cute because I can see it happening <laughs> today. But there was this little boy who was homesick from church on a Sunday morning and he was really sick so he didn't get to go. But his dad went, because his dad was ushering. <laughs> Let's just set up that scenario. And his dad comes back with a palm branch in his hand. And the little boy said, Dad, what's that? He said, well, son, when Jesus came into town, people grabbed palm branches and started waving them and shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And the little boy said, oh, great. The one Sunday I had to miss church, and Jesus actually showed up. <laughs> I was like, that is so cute, right? So why Palm Sunday? Jesus showed up, and Jesus finally showed off, displaying who he really was. And on that first Palm Sunday, Jesus displayed his power, his power, peace that leads to praise and his purpose. And all of that would automatically launch him in to the passion, the passion that leads to the cross. So what about Jesus's power? It was different. It was different. When Jesus came down from the Mount of Olives on that first Palm Sunday, riding on a young donkey, the people would have recognized this. They would have recognized this as prophesied and written about 500 years before, as I said, in the book of Zechariah. So Zechariah was a prophet. And you heard it read in the reading today that Zechariah said, in verses 9 and 10, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he. What? Humble. And riding on a donkey. Not just any donkey. On a colt. The foal of a donkey. This was spoken 500 years before it happened on that first Palm Sunday. Therefore, the people would have known that Jesus riding on a donkey was a symbol of a king who was coming in power. But the thing that they didn't understand was that Jesus' power came through peace and nonviolence. Now, Tertullian, who is an early ancient church historian. His things he wrote, he was a history writer. They're not in the scriptures, but he wrote things that we can read alongside the scriptures of what was going on at that time. So Tertullian, this ancient church historian, wrote that at the same time, and this is really fascinating, at the same time that Jesus was riding into Jerusalem on one side of the city on a donkey with palm branches waving, on the other side of Jerusalem, Pontius Pilate was riding into Jerusalem. He was coming with a huge Roman army adorned with chariots and horses and weapons of war because the whole intention for Pontius Pilate to be in Jerusalem at the time of the Passover was to what? Maintain peace in the city. Maintain peace. Oh, the irony. Now, what kind of power would you prefer? to rule over you, or for you to rule over others? Would you want Pontius Pilate's power, one of empire, domination, oppression of people who are poor, division and separation of people, hatred causing hatred among groups? Do you want that 
spiteful, revengeful, look out only for yourself kind of power to rule over you? Or would you want to embrace Jesus kind of power? The power of the one who rides into town on a donkey. The power displayed through peace and nonviolence. You see, the people on that first Palm Sunday had a choice, and so do we. Their choice is also our choice. What kind of power do we choose to rule over us or that we choose to rule over other people? You see, Jesus' power through peace led to genuine praise. The shouts of the people and the disciples and the others indicated whose side they were on. The ones who were there with Jesus indicated that they were there for him because people preferred Jesus' power over that of Pontius Pilate, though they still didn't fully understand what it meant. And that word Hosanna, do you know what it means? Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna means, Lord, save us. Save us. That's what Hosanna literally means. It still has the excitement that you would say, yay, like at a football game. But it meant something very specific. Save us now. Because the people were ready for change. They wanted to be saved from the lives that they knew in order to find a better life. Jesus tells us that as Jesus entered Jerusalem, the people didn't just shout Hosanna, but they began rejoicing and praising God, saying, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. That is a phrase that is found in the Old Testament going all the way back to the Psalms. Psalm 118. Let me read it for you. Y'all, here is proof that I have baby goats in my house that like to help me with sermon preparation and don't agree with how goats are treated in the scriptures. So I got to tape it back in because they love to nibble the bottom of the pages and... Yeah, I tried to stop them, and the page came with them. So Psalm Psalm 118, verse 25, 21, and then 25 through 28, it says, I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. Save us. Give us success. And here it comes. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is our God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with what? Branches. Branches. Up to the horns of the altar. The altar, the horn, there were horns on the edges of the altar at the temple. For you are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, and I will will extol you. So without a doubt, the people are shouting that they knew more than just Hosanna. They are shouting the very things that they knew the Messiah was supposed to be. So they're declaring that through their shouts of praise that Jesus is the Messiah, the one who came to save them. And they didn't just have a clue from the psalm reading or from the readings from Zechariah, but they had seen for themselves Jesus' very deeds of power and peace. They saw the lame walk, the blind see, the people set free from bondage. They saw people healed and restored back to their communities. They had seen the power of Jesus displayed in his courage to cross over social boundaries, to love others no matter what people thought. They saw him eat with tax collectors and sinners and prostitutes, which was a radical acceptance of them and an affirmation of God's love for them. 
They had experienced the power of Jesus' parables and stories. They had seen his power of multiplication and provision and multiplying fish and loaves. And if it's as if that wasn't all enough, they saw Jesus bring a little girl back to life. And then they saw Jesus bring Lazarus back to life. Now, like that people on the first Palm Sunday, I wonder if what you have seen and heard from Jesus is enough to make you shout Hosanna this morning. If you have seen God's deeds of power in your own life, give me a Hosanna. Hosanna. If you have seen people having faith to meet the end of their life at peace and unafraid because they believe that their life belonged to the Lord, whether they live or die, say Hosanna. Hosanna. If you have experienced the power of someone forgiving you for something you have done, shout Hosanna. Hosanna. If you have experienced the release of forgiving someone else for what they have done to you, shout Hosanna. Hosanna. If you have seen the relief or joy in someone's eyes when you showed up to help them, shout Hosanna. Hosanna. If you have had a prayer answered, shout Hosanna. Hosanna. If you have felt God's peace and calm to get you through a difficult situation, shout Hosanna. Hosanna. If you have felt the support of your church family when you were going through a hard time, shout Hosanna. Hosanna. If you have had someone take you under their wing and be gracious to you because they were inspired by Jesus, shout Hosanna. Hosanna. You see, we too have a seen and experienced God's mighty power. People were shouting their hosannas to Jesus, and the Pharisees, the religious leaders of that day, were freaking out. The whole blessed is the king got them so stirred up that they said to one another at the end of the reading today, you see, you can do nothing. The whole world has gone after him. Yes. Because the world wanted something, or rather someone, different to lead them. A powerful person who cared about them. Who brought peace instead of conflict. And not the kind of peace that the world gives that's just the absence of conflict. But the kind of peace that brings content in any and every situation, even in the face of persecution, just like Jesus did in facing the cross. And that is what Jesus demonstrated on that first Palm Sunday. And in the Holy Week that followed, He had peace because he knew his purpose. He knew why he came. If we go a little further past our reading today, in John 12, verses 23 to 28, it says, Jesus answered them, The hour has come. When John uses that phrase, the hour, it means it's the countdown to the cross. We just talked about that in our Bible study this morning. The countdown to the cross has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who lose their life Who love their life, lose it. And those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, thy servant will be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. And then Jesus says, now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. It is for this very reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven saying, I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. 
Jesus' purpose was to bring peace through his death. Jesus' purpose was to die in order to bear much fruit so that we can sit here today and worship him securely knowing that our salvation is secure. Jesus' purpose was to lose his life in order that we might find it. Jesus' purpose was to bring God glory not with a crown of jewels, but wearing a crown of thorns instead. Not with power like the world desires, but with power that turns the world's ideas of power upside down. Where the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Where the poor will be lifted up and the rich will be brought low. Where those who have the true power here on earth are the ones who are willing to serve. And Jesus' ultimate purpose was to use his power not to save himself, but to save you and to save the lives of all who call on the name of Jesus as Savior, Messiah, and Lord. On that first Palm Sunday, Jesus displayed his power through peace, that led to praise because he knew his purpose. And all of that would ultimately lead to his passion, his death on a cross that would lead people to follow Jesus and shout his praises for thousands of years to come. Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King, the King of our lives, the King of our hearts, the King of heaven and earth for all eternity. Will you join with me in shouting one last Hosanna, Hosanna, Lord save us. That's what that means. And he has. Thanks be to God. Amen. confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed printed on the back inside cover of our blue hymnal. We confess together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of a Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
You may be seated for our time of prayer. I will conclude each prayer petition with Lord in your mercy, and if you would please respond, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, we praise you. Just like the people on that first Palm Sunday praised you with words of Hosanna, and blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Too often we forget in our prayers to just spend time praising you. So God, we praise you. We re exalt you. We say, great is the name of the Lord. Blessed are you. We give you honor and praise and thanksgiving. We rejoice because there is no one like you. God, we thank you so much. Let us be like the people on that first Palm Sunday, that we praise you with our lips and with our lives. But Lord, help us also to learn from them so that not just a few days later, we are those same people shouting words, crucify him, crucify him, because he wasn't who we expected him to be. God, help us to trust and believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Savior of the world, the one the prophets declared, the one who has come into our life, the one who died on a cross and rose again to demonstrate the power of your love. Lord, in your mercy. God, we pray for our world that is in so desperate need of being turned upside down, just like Jesus did. Lord, in our world, we have power grossly misdefined. And so, God, we pray that those who are in power would learn to serve. And those who have no power would be lifted up. We pray for those who are poor, that they will be lifted up, and those who are rich will be brought down low as we seek to give away what you have given us to those who are in need. God, we pray that your idea of power and love that prevailed through peace would also prevail in our world where there is a misconstrual of power. We pray that your peace would, re would um, prevail in places of war and conflict and homes that are divided and families that are in turmoil. And Lord, we pray that you would rescue and save those for whom power is ruled over them the way the world sees. God, use us as you are able to seek to bring about change and transformation in our world. Lord, in your mercy. And holy God, in this holy week, we pray that you prepare our hearts, our minds, as we walk with you to the journey, to take the journey to the cross. Lord, we do not take what you have done for us for granted. So help us meet you at the table in that last supper. Enable us and allow us to allow you to wash our feet in servanthood so that we may learn to serve others like you. Enable, enable us, Lord, to meet you at the foot of the cross and not to deny you or run away, but face death just like you did for our sake, not yours. And then, Lord, we look forward to that day next Sunday when we get to celebrate your praise and the victory that is won in this world by your death on the cross through the power of your resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. And holy God, we lift up to you all those for whom are in need of healing, who are in need of comfort, who are in need of your power, your miracle working power. We pray for those who are sick, hurting, homeless, grieving, uh, depressed, whatever situation, sitting behind bars or sitting behind doors. 
God, we lift them up to you. We pray for those whom we know, Frank Bird, Brandon Stry, Randy Wells, Leola Schultz, Donna Sagabiel, Dennis Wendell. We give you thanks for Don and Verna Dietrich and their healing. And we pray for all those whom we know in the silence of our hearts at this time who need your healing power. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Hear us as we pray the prayer our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We now give our offerings and our tithes in response to the gifts that the Lord has so graciously given to us. join in our responsive offering prayer. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed are the gifts that are received in Christ's name. We come before you, O Lord, O God, with the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Accept them as in Christ you accept us. Use what we bring so that others can shout, Hosanna, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Receive and let's join in the responsive benediction. As we descend into this most holy of weeks, go in peace, dear people of God. Go ready to proclaim with your lives that Jesus is Lord and Savior. Offer the peace of Christ everywhere you go. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Amen. We sing our ascending hymn, All Glory, Lot, and Honor, hymn number 300. Mm -hmm. 